My astral trip to the underworld was a turning point in life, more so than anything else that had came before. In the months I had spent in the cemetery, studying the ancestors' occult library, there was still a nagging voice in the back of my head saying that I was crazy, and none of it was real. But once I had actually managed to industrial project and visit the spirit world, those doubts were gone, for good. The industrial plane was real, and if anything, the physical plane of the fantasy world, this realization sparked in the passion of me, unlike anything I felt before, and mastering the craft become um, these driving purposes in my life. Genevieve was my best teacher that I have ever hoped for, and helped me to understand of being a good witch, so also meant being a good Wiccan. My earlier attempts to solitary study and hindered me being overly anical. Genevieve taught me that faith is not a rejection of reason. Merely was the acknowledgement of my imitations. Properly honed over institutions and emotions, crafted by millions of years of natural selection. Just be powerful or inferring truth. This especially is true when not all time is required for or evidence or rational analysis. When... Whenever it, there is not a required time for or evident for rational analysis when dealing with the other worlds which, by their very nature, do not confirm their laws. To the fact that I had succeeded in industrial projection when the Delphi dream granted me such more intuitive state of mind that was all the proof I needed to a much better approach to understanding the spirit world. I have an altar now. A small oak table draped in a purple velvet triple moon tapestry. It was enough that I could move it around the cemetery when I wanted to. But I usually keep it in maintenance shed where it won't get wet. I have candles on for fire, incense for air, salt and gemstones for earth, and filled a clearance of water. I have my half frame feathers from the crows of the cemetery, and a wand that made a willow branch, a small cauldron and a motar pierced, and by Book of Shadows, and Princess Talesman, where there were small busts, one of the Mother Goddess and the Horned God, two figurines, and the crone with the staff and cloak, the winged Iris, who I worship as an amalgamate of the free goddess. I do not, however, have any idol of the maiden goddess on my altar, for reasons I expect clear. Every day now, I kneel at my altar, Light the candles, burn the incense, and I pray. Genevieve have also helped me to realize that the purpose of prayer that is not a God's answers, or even there is a literal entity who identified as the God you're praying to them. All forms of magic are based on the effects of conclusiveness as a reality. Praying helps clearly crystallize your thoughts and desires in mind and reputation and reinforces them. Words have thought of given physical form, and speaking of writing them, makes them more real. Genevieve also, I have good believers in ones is that interconnection us with all things, and the spells and prayers spreads out and interconnections to influence reality, including the God that we're praying today if we're lucky. It's nothing iconic after realizing that this was an all goddess actually did choose to acknowledge my prayers. It was the June of last year, about three months after I had visited the underworld. Genevieve had gone on industrial journeys many since then, but I refused to go anywhere near the portal behind me. The tree line would be in spirit or in flesh. I stepped out of my shed when I saw a blonde woman sitting by the lawn chair by my fire pit, my cat Moxie on her lap. For a second, I assumed it was Genevieve, because who else wouldn't it be? But Genevieve doesn't drive her own a car. Even if she did, she wouldn't be able to find the cemetery on her own. I was the only person who knew how to do that. Hey, I shouted, stomping towards her. The anger that everyone had dared to trespass into my scary cemetery, overriding my sense of caution. The woman looked up at me and smiled. The same smug smile I had since the countless times from the portrait of the mausoleum. I froze in my tracks. It was Paris bone. She looked a little different from when I had seen her underworld. Her skin was sun kissed, and her hair was crowned in coronet actual flowers instead of gemstones. And she was now in clad in only a glossomer summer dress, 
Hey, you too, she smirked, gently stroking Moxie's hair. How has your summer been? Mine's been dreadfully dull, and but all my summers are like that. I miss my kingdom, I miss my king, I miss my dog, like Mark and Twan. I could go to heaven to climb it to hell for company. Dread Persbone, I murmured softly, as abdominally reverence to her, terrified at what she might be planning on doing. Actually, Ferris Persbone is fine now, given the season, she assured me. Although I do appreciate the reminder of proper honorific. How are you here? I asked. Bewildered from everything that I might have understood Elder Kin, they wouldn't be able to come across the veil to accept the eliminable times and spaces. Reverse an astral project, let's call it. My astral form in Summerland, but I am protecting, projecting my mind in remittently and physical body, made from the unblunted mind manner. She said monotonically, "It is hard, not even for the weak and veiled, and I could even project it, an image into your mind that I just wanted to talk. But I see throughout that this nexus play mine a visit. After all this time, it's quite amazing and charming. I could see why you love it so much. Come on now, we just don't stand there. Stand, sit by my side, and we'll talk for a bit. It would be good for us to talk here." Instead of far more informal and settling of my court, do you? I nodded and sat down in the chair and dented to her. It was a rare opportunity for her to be actually converse with Dentity, and it wasn't going to waste it. Where, where are you? What Genevieve thinks you are? I asked curiously, in emisation of a specific aspect from Penesthetic, Penphetic, Braham over Soul. Words, words, words. She chuckled. <laughs> I think the Sky Father said it's best that I am what I am. If it means to appeal to my lingering mantralism that you might still help possess, you think that the universe is still simitation and made me as a mod. But that's still a mo- metamorpher and no more or less valid for metamorphers used by the most primitive shamans. But the answer to what I am will always be beyond your understanding. I nodded again, deciding to waste my limited mind with her with any more metaphysics. Then that explains to me why you can't just have my friend back, I asked, my voice cracking a bit as I did so. I'm not arguing whatever you have the authority to keep them. I'll admit that you do, but why do you care? I'm not even asking him to be brought back to life. I just want him soul. What does one soul mean to you? She drew pensive, seemingly considering the response very carefully. Identity is very important to people. Samantha, it's far more important than to us morals, she began. The industrial plane is far more malleable to the body we thought the world is. Thus, their bodies are much more her accurate reflections in her true nature. Before I was the queen of the underworld, I was nothing more than my mother's daughter, in her mind and the minds of many others. She is the perfect mother and the ideal feminine authority. She is selflessness and to the point of health destruction than we needed. Viewing the power solely in the as responsibility and never as privilege, the incapable of being corrupted or deluded by it, but the embodiment of pure compassion and lives only for the care of others. But to live in such an un, un- benefactor that could be so smoothering and fantasizing. And it would have been my fate or for all eternity. I was her daughter to be cared and dote over, but most of all to protect. I was to spend my eternity in Summerland where I'd be safe, helping the moral souls who came here despite for respite and even reflection from my cycle of rebirth until they were ready to return to Earth or ascend higher yet. That was to be only my reward for my toil, the warm fuzzy feeling in me knowing me I helped people and didn't even even had to worry about messing it up since my dumb mother would have always been hoovering over me, ready to correct my her, any mistakes her helplessness idiot daughter made. She loves me, I know she does, but she does not respect me when I told her that I wasn't selflessness of all of it, 
that I wasn't happy with the life she oriented for me. She assured me that I would grow out of it, that she knew better than myself knew, and that she knew what was best for me. She wanted me to be safe, and I wanted to be free. But the most abrevental parent-child conflict of all, my growing unhappiness started to impact on her own sense of identity. However, I was making it increasingly difficult for her to view herself as a perfect mother, and any rehabilitations against her only made that worse. In particular, she viewed herself as extremely progressive and permissive, and in the harm done. Do it as it though it will, right? Such as I will be sephrotic to the gods of godness, memph and starists, and even souls that are in the type combination of the manner that f- pleased me. Then I fell in love with the lords of the underworld, and she did not like that one bit. May I ask why? I interrupted. Same reason most people didn't like him, I imagine, she shrugged. He also tends to the lost souls of us on the higher levels of industrial plane, though I prefer not to think about it. No, I mean, why did you fall in love with him? Clarified, I asked, pondering whatever or not she had legitimately understood, misunderstood me, or has been trying to deflect my question. Well, okay, now, I view more love as primitive force than a rational choice, one that even the gods are powerless to resist. It just happened, but if I must give my reasons, I admire the quiet dignity to which he constructed his thankless work. He, The paradise that he made in hell, he also gave me something that I could never forget Get my mother, respect. He never spoke down to me. He always treated me like an adult and an equal, and I respect in return, and willing to become his queen and aid him to his work, which I deem far more rewarding and playing guidance counselor to the blessed souls of Summerland. My mother, of course, was devastated by my choice to spend an eternity in the gloomy underworld with its lost souls. Everything I did in my power to rescue me, to save me, and when she could view herself in a complete failure as my mother fell into a deep depression, the entire summer land began to decay with her. It was particularly a Fisher King scenario that was partially because she was neglecting her duties that no one else could do. I was her main assistant and I was gone. The crone was wise but old and limited to amount of work she can do. My father, the horned god, obedient to my mother in the point, he's usually useless without giving her second orders. But like many people, his identity is essential to his existence, and his identity could be that of ideal son, lover, father, willing to do anything to provide for his family, and even die. So that's what he did. It's hard to describe what he did in his own literal terms, but he made a sacrifice that saved Summerland simultaneously and made him worthy of it. He descended to the underworld. I hadn't quite realized the things that had gotten bad without me, and that my mother couldn't be the mother without the maiden. I hated being living in the maiden, though, and I loved being the queen of the underworld. But how could I, in good conclusions, keep up with the throne, knowing that my mother, already in the grip of crippling depression, just had lost her beloved consort, and because she couldn't attend to her duties, the industrial plane needed both in Summerland and the underworld, and the Summerland needed the maiden goddess. But the underworld could survive without a queen. If I were selflessness as my mother, I would have returned to Summerland forever. But I'm not, so I didn't. Instead, I proposed a compromise. I would not forsake my identity as the maiden goddess, nor would forsake my preferred identity as the queen of the underworld. I would forever be both lost of words and would split my time between the two. My mother had accepted these terms. I returned to the Summerland with me on my mother's side, and it was enough healed, though, that what my father had sacrificed that could be restored to him, and it was resurrecting to come become spring. My mother still really hasn't approved of my life choices, but she accepts them, and though she misses me dearly, she is able to maintain Summerland during my absence. 
knowing that we'll be reunited again on Beth's line. So you see, Samantha, I, like many other gods, Tads, have a determiny to my existence. Between the fairest Perisbone and dread Perisbone, between the bitful daughter and rebel daughter, between the Disney princess and the Disney queen. She held out two fingers and whistled for a chirping songbird and perched up on them. With a sinister smirk, she blew on it and instantly fell dead to the ground. A compassion for its own sake and the fairest Paris bone. Any engulfed with compassion and the capacity as queen of the underworld compromises that identity. I prefer an identity that of the one I made for myself and will maintain it to the end no matter what the cost is. You have offered me no reason to return your friend other than your pity, and it makes an enormous amount of pity for me to be willing to act as the fairest Paris bone while I sat by my husband's side. Don't get me wrong, it is sweet of you to care about your friend so much, but you're no orphanous mourning for endurance dice. I sat silently contemplating on what she said. All that sounded very convoluted in the way you just didn't want to, I muttered, hanging my head. I suppose it is, she smirked. I understand if that explanation doesn't buy you any comfort, but I have some questions for you now, if you don't mind. What would those be? I asked. Well, Samantha, I know since you came to see me, you have been exploring these woods, both on and off the trails, wondering if my truth to you of the old legends you read about it, she replied. You found the green man, didn't you? The green man is a nature spirit that resides and watches over the Har Harwick woods. He usually takes the form of the tail, Selvin and Starer, many clear with my clairvoyance. He hasn't been hard to once to find since I started looking. I did, I admitted, not seeing any point in lying, although I did suspect where I know she was going on with this. How could you not? He'd be very hard for someone like you to miss, he she nodded, and even devote of my father. He would have been all eager to aid a witch. I can only imagine the first thing you would have to ask him was to help him find your friend. And I hope that this first suggestion was to make him your spirit familiar. That way he'll be anchored to you and unable to descend you back to the underworld. In your service, he might not be able to rack up enough karma to ascend in the Summerland someday. Am I wrong? I sighed but gave a resigned nod. That's exactly what he told me. But as much as you miss your friend, you haven't tried anything yet, she went on. I assume that you'll be waiting until Halloween, when the veil's at its weakest. Then I hopefully distracted by my welcoming party. I've come up here to tell you that it's not going to work, Samantha. I made my decision. I know what you're up to, and will not be made a fool of. I admire your presence. I really do. But do not think of any instant that could defy me. You think that you just because you had really some old glamorous walked across the plains and danced around in the bonfire with your little girlfriend and all that powerful witch? You're a dabbler, and many advertise that you have may possess this pure Dunning Kruger effect. You don't even have the slightest to know how much you don't you know how much you cannot understand. If you do try and trick me or steal from me, you will fail. And for reasons I have explained. I will not be merciful. This is not a fret. This is a warning. I like you, and I don't want to have to punish you. But I will if you attempt to come to fit my ruling. If you really want me to release him as your familiar, continue to stay your witchcraft until you're advanced enough that you could really offer me something in a worthy exchange. I believe that you have I have that you have that in you, Samantha. It's been something I've been actually willing to agree to. Well, I don't think I'll be willing to agree on your own terms, but knowing that I know about you, I said, admittedly. I do not want to be your subject. I do not want to end up in your underworld. And I sure as hell do not want to condemn any innocent descendants. I may have that to fate, but you may be the goddess, but not a god or the capital G. You're not all that powerful, or even supremely powerful, and you're not even the sole operator of the fate of mortal souls. I'm not afraid of you, and I'm not giving in to you. If I do save up my friend in my own terms, not yours. Go to hell now, please. I grimaced as she picked up Moxley and held him to her face, presumably contemplating the killing him just to punish me for my outburst. You're lucky it's summer, and you're cute, she told him. 
before sending him down on the ground. Then she looked up at him with me with a pity pity, and I knew that I could not receive that across while she was under her mother's thumb. If you ever change your mind about that, just holler, and I swear I won't hold anything against you, she assured, before it dissipating into the spray of mist. I scooped up Moxley in my arms and clutched him to my chest, nuzzling his head while sobbing, wondering what the hell I had just done. I had no real reason to believe that I could identify Prisbone, and every reason that I believe in blowing to him within was just my only hope of helping my friend. But as I said, I was committed to trusting my own institution now, and my own intuition told me I was missing something. I felt that something was off, that something didn't quite make sense, and was just a cusp of my consciousness, realizing in mind of what I felt, and now I know what I was the only one more empathy realization away from being able to rescue my friend or about Persbone's approval. I just hope that I have that empathy before the next Halloween.